Hello everybody, it's Minecraft Gone 5 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to motion track in Cinema 4D. So I'll be showing you how to put text on the ground and then like how to put Minecraft blocks and put holes in it and reflections maybe. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So first you're going to need the video that you're going to be motion tracking and you don't want anything too shaky so don't run with the camera or anything like that and you don't want anything with a lot of complicated lighting and shadows so don't do anything under like the shadow of a tree because that's going to be really complicated to light in Cinema 4D. And you also don't want to record with a really bad camera, so try to have a good camera like, you know, the camera on a phone works. That's what I used for mine. So this is what I recorded right here, so I'm going to use this for the rest of the video. Also, this next thing is optional, but if you want it to look a little more realistic, you can get a panorama of the area you recorded in. So I did that, and here's what it looks like. So once you have your footage recorded, you're going to need to go into some program to convert it to images. So uh, you could use After Effects, uh, that's what I'm going to be using, but you could use anything else. There's even probably some websites that you can use. First, you're going to need to drag in your footage. So um, I have this here, background, and I'm going to drag it in and let it import. And then take this and drag it onto this thing here and it will make a new composition that is the same resolution and everything as the footage. So then you want to go to file, export, add to render queue and you want to change the format from AVI to PNG sequence and then click OK. And then you want to go into the settings here and uh, you don't have to change anything in here. Just remember that the frame rate of your video is this here. So um, look at this and it says use comps frame rate and it says 30. I recorded at 30 FPS. Um, so just remember that number because you're going to need it later. You can also look up here if you want for the frame rate uh, right here. So 30. So next we want to go to the output. And we want to put this inside a folder because if you don't, it's going to generate a bunch of image files um, everywhere. So I already have a folder and then you're going to save it in here and I'll save it as background to and then you want to click render. So this is going to take a little bit, so you'll just have to wait. It uh, depends on what frame rate you recorded at and the quality and the speed of your computer and stuff. So uh, just wait a little bit and um, should be done. Okay, so it finished rendering, and as you can see, if we go in the folder, there are a lot of images in here. Uh, this is like every frame of the footage, so we need this to import into Cinema 4D. So now you can close After Effects. So now we need to go into Cinema 4D, and uh, first thing you need to do is turn your render settings on. So I have a preset already. So the reason we want to do this is because if you, or once you do the motion tracking, it will replace the frame rate and the width and height with the footage. So if you have a preset in here, then you want to do this first because it'll replace the uh, this. So now we can close this and then go to motion tracker and motion tracker. And this puts in a uh, new object and right here we have footage so you want to click on the three dots and go to the folder where you have the images in and you want to select the first one which is with all the zeros in it so first image of the entire thing click open and now you can see that it will fill the entire screen with the footage here and um, it looks a little blurry and you can fix that by changing the sampling up you can see if we change this all the way down, it gets really pixelated and blurry, but if we change it up, it is full quality. So next you want to go to 2D tracking and click auto track. And this is going to take a while to complete, just like After Effects. Um, so you can see the progress down here. So it's going to go through this a couple times, and once it's done, I will show you what to do next. Okay, so now you'll see that there are these little dots everywhere, and uh, they kind of follow like things in the ground, like the cracks are like over here. 
and uh, we're not done yet so the next thing you need to do is go to reconstruction and click run 3d solver okay so it finished tracking that and you can see that we have a bunch of dots over here a bunch of green and red dots and a camera so the green and red dots are like the uh, points on the ground so um, this is where your object will go later and the green points are the good points the like points that were tracked really well and the red ones are the ones that weren't tracked so well so now we need to flip this so it's even with the ground because if you put a object in right now it's just kind of like here you know you don't want to have to take every object and put it here and rotate it and things like that so uh, what we want to do is we'll go inside the camera and you can see that these points stick to the ground now so uh, what we want to do is we want to go to a frame where our object is going to be and I'll put it like uh, right here so now you want to right click on this and go to motion track of tags and go to planner constraint and this is going to put a triangle thing in and what you want to do is hook this up with three points on the surface that you're going to have your object on so mine's going to be on the ground here so I'm going to make these hook up to points on the ground and if you have this on a wall you'd obviously want to put the triangle on the wall and you can see that when I drop the triangle corner on this uh, circle it shows up in here and you can see I have three points that are all green you want to choose the green ones uh, don't choose the red ones so now I have three points and now if we get out of my camera uh, you can actually see the points that were selected here and what you want to do is change the axis to Y and when you turn it to Y you can see that the triangle is now flat with the ground so it's flat so when you put a object in and you, if you move it down there it'll look uh, a lot better but there's still one more thing we want to do we don't want to move it down there every time and this also helps make it look more realistic um, because I mean if you put a cube in and it's a little bit above these points it's not going to look very good so you want it to be um, centered correctly so what we want to do is right click this and motion tracker tags and position constraint and then you want to go back inside the camera and click on this tag and you'll see it there should be a point somewhere uh, is this here's the point and you want to put this somewhere where your object's going to be so I'll just put it right here and now if I get out of the camera you can see that the center of the uh, entire thing here is in the center of the world so if I put a cube in it's going to be right in the middle so you don't have to really position it much and uh, it's right where we want it so now if I play this and scale it down a little bit uh, you can see that it sticks to the ground and it's a uh, motion track and everything I'm going to turn this to all frames so then it plays faster so you can see that the cube will stay on the ground and it moves good with the camera so now we want to make this a little more realistic so what we're going to do is we're going to add a plane and then we're going to go over here and make a new texture and we're going to turn off reflectance and you want to click on the three dots and find where you saved all the images right here and you want to click on zero and when this comes up you want to click no if you click yes it might not work and then you want to click on the image here go to animation and click calculate and you'll see that it'll um, calculate the frame rate and all that stuff so now go to editor and go to animate preview and now what this does is it will play the animation in the editor so if I drag this you can see that it's moving in the editor too and it will in the render so now if we get in the camera you can see that this obviously isn't right so what we want to do is we want to click on the texture tag and we want to change the projection from uh, the UVW mapping to frontal and uh, now you'll see that it matches the ground more so if I move it forward you can see it goes over these and it matches but if we render it it's not going to look very good uh, you'll see like a giant box so what you want to do is you want to right click Cinema 4D Tags Compositing and then you want to 
check compositing background and what that's going to do is it's going to make the brightness of the plane the same brightness as the background and uh, we don't have a background yet so actually what we want to do is go up here and add a background and then just drag the texture on the background and you can go ahead and take the camera and drag it out here and delete the motion tracking thing now because we don't need it if I turn the background off you can see that the camera still moves so that's all we really need and it speeds up the render time if you do that because if you don't it can be really slow so now if we render this out you can see that it looks normal and there's a plane there so now what we want to do is we want to add a sky uh, this isn't necessary like I was saying earlier with the panorama you don't need to do it but it makes it more realistic so this only works if you have global illumination on so you want to make another texture of the panorama and you want to drag it onto the sky and uh, then it'll um, put the texture on the sky and what you want to do is kind of align it so right now the texture is actually the wrong direction so uh, if you go up to the sky and click on this and you change the length u to negative 100 it will flip it the right direction and now you just kind of want to align this so um, the camera when I recorded this was pointing away from the house so we want to rotate the sky until it is pointing about the right direction you're not going to really see this in render this is just for lighting so uh, that's, that's close enough you know what? I'll just there so it's pretty close uh, it doesn't need to be exact and this is also um, it might help with reflections so now we have that set up and uh, also in the plane you want to click on the compositing tag and uncheck self shadowing now what you want to do is go up to the sky, Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and you want to uncheck Scene by Camera. And uh, we don't want the sky to be visible to the camera because the background is what's visible. So now if you put a cube in and you position it correctly. So if you render it out, you can see that um, we do not have much of a shadow. It looks kind of bad. So uh, we can fix that by adding a light in and uh, now put the light over the cube. Change the shadow to soft and I'm gonna make this a little bit of a blue color because it was a gray day but um, for you, you might wanna do like a you know yellow texture or something. And now if we render it out, you can see there's a little bit of a shadow so this still kind of looks weird, so I'm just going to position the light up a little bit, and hopefully that should fix it. Alright, there we go. So that's not uh, that bad. Uh, it does look a little weird, um, and it's mainly because of the size of the cube. So if I were to make this like a little bit bigger, it would look better. Or if I had some text on the ground or something. So yeah, that looks a little bit better. So the lighting does depend on the size of an object. So you can also do this with text, so I'll show you that. So there it is with text on the ground. You can see that this looks a little more realistic than a cube. So it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to show you how to put some Minecraft blocks in and how to put like a hole in the ground. So first you're going to need to import your block. So I'll do some cobblestone. Okay there. So now we need to actually make this plane a cube. So I'll just put a cube in. I'll just take these tags and drag them on the cube and then delete the plane. And uh, now we'll take the cube and I'll make it uh, wide. And then we'll take the cube and drag it down until it is about even with the cube. Now if you render it and adjust the light. And now the cobblestone is sitting on the ground. So now what we can do is we can put a hole in the ground so what you're going to need to do is get a bool so you click up here and you go to bool and then you take the ground object this big cube and put it in there and then take the cobblestone and put it in there 
and I put it in the wrong order so um, if it disappears like that switch it around and now if you drag down the cobblestone it'll start making a hole in the ground so drag it almost all the way down if you drag it too far um, it won't show up so you have to get it pretty close and now if you're under it there's a hole in the ground so one more thing I'm going to show you is how to do reflections so um, I'll just delete this and fix this and I'll put a cube on the ground okay so to add a reflection all you have to do is copy your texture that is animated so not this one this one the one uh, that you put on the ground and background and you want to copy and paste it and then on this texture you're going to put reflectance and that'll add specular if you want specular on there but I'm gonna change it to reflection legacy and drag down the roughness specular strength and bump and then turn up the reflection to I don't know like 15 and then you just take that texture and you put it on your ground object so the big cube on the ground and then when you render it out you can't really see that there's a reflection so we're going to change the strength up. I'll just change it to 50 for example. You probably wouldn't want to go this far. Now you can kind of see the reflection of the cube and this looks really bad uh, and that's because of the sky so what you probably want to do is go in the sky to the compositing tag and uncheck seen by reflection and now when you render it out you can see that there is a reflection of the cube on the ground. Obviously you wouldn't want to do this on a surface like this. You'd want to do it on maybe a shiny floor if you have one or if it's raining outside, I don't know. But that is how you do reflections. So that is how to motion track in Cinema 4D and put holes in the grounds and stuff like that. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.